Welcome to the Mechanics of Solid Lecture Series. In this series of videos, we continue on examples of simple indeterminate axial systems, bringing in examples that incorporate thermal strains and misfits. The lesson objectives, what I want you to be able to do after completion of this lesson, is evaluate thermal strains in statically determinate systems, and evaluate forces and deflections in simple one degree indeterminate systems with application to thermal strain initial gaps or pre-strains. Here's the first problem that we'll be looking at here today. What we have here is a bar of two materials fully bonded together, uh, supported at the end. The composite bar has a solid core of material 2 and bonded to a hollow tube of material 1. And the coefficients of thermal expansion cross-sectional areas and elastic modulus are given for each material in the system. The system is subjected to an applied end load of 25 kips and also a temperature increase of 58 degrees Fahrenheit. And we are asked to evaluate elongation and stress in each bar due to these loading systems. So let's go ahead and summarize what we know or also already is a good uh, summary of the given information, but we want to add to that the information about the loading, which is that we have the end load P of 25 kips, as well as a temperature increase, delta T equals 58 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a type of load, a thermal load. Uh, we're asked to find for this problem uh, the stress in each bar, I'm going to call that those stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 for material 1 and material 2. Since we're working in English units, I want to find those stresses in KSI, or kips per square inch. We're also asked to ev evaluate the elongation in each bar, which I'm going to call delta 1 and delta 2, and I want to evaluate those in inches. Okay, we'll start out with considerations of equilibrium by drawing a free body diagram. I'm going to go ahead and make a cut through my bar somewhere in the middle and draw a free body diagram of this end of the bar. Okay, so what I have is uh, just showing a little piece of the bar. There's here's material two surrounded by material one. Uh, at the end I have my applied load of 25 kips and then I have the forces acting in material two and material one. Um, I can draw them as two forces although recognize that it's really a, a hollow circular bar so it's just the total um, force uh, in the outer part of the system is what I'm calling F1. Okay, so our equilibrium equation here is some of the forces in X equal to zero, considering force acting positive to the right, and we're going to do equilibrium in units of kips. So we have the end force, 25 kips, minus F1 minus F2 equals zero. Let me go ahead and solve for uh, F2 in terms of F1. Bring F2 to the other side or uh, reversing the sign of F2. F2 equals 25 kips minus F1. And we'll go ahead and leave that as is for now or compatibility consideration. Now we recognize this hopefully as parallel members and we remember that for parallel members our coaxial members our compatibility equation is always that the members, the materials as long as they're bonded together have to move together so they would have the same total deflection delta 1 equals delta 2. Okay, And this is where we're going to incorporate the thermal strain and the thermal considerations. 
Now remember, when subjected to an applied load, uh, delta 1, uh, the delta is equal to FL over AE, where F is the internal force. So delta 1 equals F1 L over A1E. And that would be due to the applied load. But there's also a thermal elongation, or a thermal um, deformation due to the thermal strain, which we can write as alpha 1 delta T times L, positive if the temperature change is positive. Same thing for delta 2. Delta 2 equals F2 L over A2E plus alpha 2 delta T times L. So it's very simple. If all we have to do to consider the thermal strain is to add these additional terms to our deflections in our compatibility equation. Uh, let's go ahead and combine those two, saying delta 1 equals delta 2, or F1L over A1E1 plus alpha 1 delta T times L equals F2L over A2E2 plus alpha 2 delta T times L. And notice I have the same L carried through all of these terms, so I can simply cancel it out. We will continue and solve this problem in the next video.